Hi, this is Maggie, and I'm here with another How to Digitize video. This particular video will work for those of you with Mac or PC computers. I'm showing you how to do it on a Mac, but at the same time, what I'm showing you can be done with the same commands on your PC. If you have any questions at all, just pop into our Facebook group and we'd be happy to point you in the right direction and help you out. This one is going to be on digitizing end-to-end -end quilting designs. They're very popular right now and they're actually pretty easy to do. So if you've never digitized, uh, we consistently see people say, oh, I bought this and, you know, I opened it, but I haven't done anything. Give the video a try. This is actually an easy one to get a finished design from. The other thing is that I'm not using anything specific to my SoNet. So this will ver work with most of the older versions of software. I can't think of any commands that I'd be using that you don't have in my SoNet, Premiere Plus 2, Tour Embroidery 3, 60, 4D, 3D, whatever. You may have different uh, motifs available and that sort of thing, but pretty much you can do this as long as you have the digitizing level. So you need platinum, ultra, or a light. I'm sorry, but there is just um, not an easy way to do this with the other levels of programs that are really meant for editing more than for digitizing a new design. That said, um, Gold does have assistants or wizards, depending on which program you're using, that do help you create a new design from pictures or from the spirograph. So there are some create from your stuff tools in the Gold level. <coughs> First off, what is end-to-end -end quilting? Now, quilters will refer to edge-to-edge -edge quilting, and it basically means they're repeating one quilting pattern over a whole quilt top, and they usually do this by rows. Now, long-arm quilters doing this often use free motion quilting, and to me, this is important because if you've ever watched people do free motion quilting, you know, that a lot of times they go forward with a stitch and then back over it and then move forward again in order to make the design they want. So for us, that would be a double stitch. And they also use straight line quilting to achieve the edge to edge. Now machine embroideries will call it end to end quilting. And some companies say, oh, it is only single running lines, but you know, if you're thinking like a quilter who does edge to edge, you can use double stitch and go back and forth a little bit to get the design that you want. And most of the machine embroidery will have one line coming from the left and exiting on the right side of the hoop or one from the top exiting on the bottom and that's so you can line it up easily. Um, let's now this kind of thing can be done, although it looks like it's, it's two lines here. This is not edited yet. I would have to take out this little, this little piece on the side. And this is a border from Super Designs. But this part, let's see if my arrow will show this part here. The outer edge does a double stitch, and then it comes back, and then it comes and does the single stitch. So is that something technically, because it closes off that end and that end, you'd have to pick out two stitches, would you consider this an end-to-end -end or not? And it's completely up to you. I don't enter quilting contests, and I very rarely quilt whole pieces. The main thing I think people have to remember about edge to edge or end to end quilting 
is because it's normally thought of for blankets, lap blankets, larger pieces. You want the bottom to look as good as the top. In order for the bottom to look as good as the top, you can't have knots on the bottom. You know, in the machine groups, we always see people saying, oh, I just got this new machine and the bottom of the embroidery is a complete mess. And it's really, <clears throat> the machine was doing its job and it's just that when the machine knots and trims for you, depending on the design, especially cross stitch or lettuce, you may have a whole lot of knots on the bottom and it's rather ugly. So if you are stitching end to end, or edge to edge quilting on your machine embroidery machines, I would turn off the automatic trimmer because then you will still have a machine knot at each end, even if it's your single line. If you don't take it out in the program, there is a remove trims command in the stitch editor of my Sonet or modify of the premiere and earlier versions. And you want to get rid of that so the top looks as good as the bottom. And that is also why you tend to use designs that you could sort of put a pencil down and draw all over to get to the end. I could do this and just use the outer stitch and get rid of the inner one. I could go, well, I'm just going to pick a stitch at either end. Um, it's completely up to me. Again, I tend, I'm not selling and I tend to just do what I want, but this is just to give you an example. And let's see. So how do we make them in the software? Now, when I'm thinking about videos, I'm thinking of something that anybody can tackle. And we are not all wonderful artists being able to sketch beautiful designs that in our mind are the same as on paper. So what we can do in our program is we can insert designs and shapes that already exist, turn them into a running line, join them together with some swirly lines, and we have an end-to-end -end quilting design. And we can do this through using our motifs. We have shapes and digitizing. We have trace and digitizing where you would bring in a background and tap on it and you would get a double trace but you can change that if you don't want a double line you can make up your own shapes you can insert the running stitch letters now these you have to look at and i'll show you how to look at things in modify to see if they have a lot of trims but i have a few letters when i use quick font and use outline most of my letters come in that each letter is a single stitch out that starts and ends at the same point. So I could use my quick font letters to write out something like love or a name or initials or whatever I wanna do. Also the super designs have running stitch designs within them. Many of them, when you look at your panel, it will say you have a choice, it comes up in color, but you can click line Many of those also have too many trims because they might have eyes that sit in the middle of the face and don't connect to the sides of the face. But some of them do work and some of them work by well, quite well. And then you can do it completely by hand. You can just, if you're an artist, you can just sit down and make your line and keep going. Now this is just an example so you can see at a high level, what I'm talking about, when I approach an end-to-end -end quilting design, I think about first placing the shapes. Now you'll notice this is designed with all the hearts upright. And that, to me, that works for a blanket. There's a top and a bottom. If you're doing a table runner or a lap blanket, you might want to arrange them so that half of them are upside down and half of them are right side up or sideways for an all over pattern. So you can think about that. But the other thing I like to do is I put down the shapes I'm going to do first. And then after that, I draw the pieces of line between them. And it can't, whoops, I meant to put my 
mouse over something. So you have, uh, these aren't gonna light up because this is a picture so that I could go through these in some order that hopefully will make sense. When I was first popping back and forth, I decided that you really needed me to put in some slides to show you uh, where we are because it's easy for me to cover too much and confuse you. <laughs> Sorry about that. But say with this, this first running stitch goes from here to the heart. And you can see the heart has a start and end point. They do show up in digitizing module in the film strip that's right in the center. So when I start, I wanna bring a line to the heart center. And then when I'm coming off that, the next thing I do, it's gonna stitch the heart and then I need another line. So I don't just do this line as one moving all around. I do one piece to go from here to the start point for this shape. And then the shape would stitch. And then I do another line from the end point of that shape to the next shape, which is actually this one because this is swirly lines that I move together. And because you don't see any lines here, if there's a line between your items in the film strip, that means there's a thread break or a thread stop that your stitching is not continuous. If there is no line between the pieces, that means your end points and start points all line up and your stitching is continuous. And as we move forward, a lot of the examples I'm showing you as we move forward are just gonna have the shapes because um, quite simply, if I tried to show you how to do lines on every single thing I have ideas about, this would be a four day class and we're just talking something you can look at and then get down at your laptop and do rather than watch all the time. So a lot of them, when I show you, I will say this is, you know, I was thinking of laying these out this way and then I'll put some swirly lines in between and you can know that the swirly lines can be done and they can be done rather easily. And let's see here. How to make a line. As I said, this can be very easy. Here we are in digitizing. So we have the digitizing symbol. And if you want to create a line, because most of what I'm showing you here is done in pieces. I'm not going from one end and doing all my designs and going out the other end, which you can do. But that's not what I'm showing for a lot of my choices. I set fill off. I set my line to a running stitch. I go over to options. And maybe I want my line to be 2.5 millimeter stitches for the stitch length. Okay. Now, if you choose freehand create, that's one of the create choices, create mode on a PC, it would also say freehand create and it would have the same symbol of that little marker within a circle. You then have choices within freehand create and we're creating an area or line. And all you do is you can use your mouse and just swirl and draw and finish, or if you have a tablet or a Wacom or whatever you use as a drawing tablet with a pencil, you can use that in the freehand create mode. Now let's get rid of this one. But this is all you do. It's all, this now is in your um, film strip, and this is how you could just choose to join one piece to another to another. If you're adept with the mouse uh, or with the pencil. Now, some of us like, I keep calling it pre precise create. That's the older versions from forever all the way back through the D programs. They call it point create. They changed the name and now you would again choose line or fill, I, I don't need to change my options. We're still going with the 
And the thing about this is you can, you put your mouse down and click and you set a point. And wherever you put the point is where your line will end up going. And you do have to finish. You can finish drawing the line if you were doing a few. Say you had a little shape here. And then you can pick it up and start again. And until you finish the point area or line tool, you'll always come into making a line. And the neat thing about these lines is you just have to click on them and you can move the points if you decide you don't like where they are. You can move them all around. Maybe you wanted to swirl them more. You can also choose to convert them. So I could convert it to a Bezier line. Maybe I've decided I want only smooth curves and I want to have Bezier help me achieve that. You can end up with points in Bezier, just so if you kind of bring it in. And I actually prefer not to um, do Bezier that way. But if I were doing, I don't want to confuse you too much, so in create mode, point create, you can choose Bezier mode. And when you choose Bezier mode, say you want an even up and down swirl, you can just choose to say go two points. handles will define the curve. See, when I put them out, I can go away or I can go away, so you play. But if I made them equidistant, so what I'm doing is I click and then I drag for the handles and I can move them all around click and drag, and I maybe want to move them up. So I can say finish busy line, and then you can say, do I want that sharp, do I want it smooth, do I want this really long on one side and not the other, do I want to twirl it in on itself, oops, go back that way. Busy is fun to play with, but it does take some getting used to, although for like a simple smooth line, if you're like, oh, Maggie, I was trying using the place points and it kept not coming out smooth. Since we're doing little bits, you can just do, you know, a short little bit. of points and just have little little parts of your line that you're going to um, get a smooth curve and build them all together that way, maybe one piece to another piece to another piece. So it is a fun thing to play with, and I actually like this a lot if I'm going for curvy lines. And it is a tool you might want to play with, and it's really not difficult. Again, just place and curve and place and curve. In digitizing, as I said, this is where I like to work. Most things I may occasionally go into draw and paint, but I am not very good at drawing on paper. So I very rarely am um, importing sort of a load background of a picture I've done. And this is why I'm showing you all those fun ways to join shapes that already exist. Motif lines are wonderful, and the motif shapes, there are so many choices when you get into them that, you know, when you look at your motif, you have the ones you define, the universal, the Fav, the Husqvarna Viking, and there are just all kinds of choices to get into. And when we do motifs, You 
choose, you're in point create, and you cho choose point create, or you choose create area or line, and you do your, your line. What I wanted to show you is that sometimes, well, they overlap, but I show you that a little bit later. Is although you can set this gap, the system will try to give you an even number of motifs to get you from end to end. And although you can set the gap, it is going to be a straight line. You'll see it's, it's straight, even though what we did kind of curved, because it's motifs, how it joins lines is based on the concept of this whole piece being small enough to fit in the foot of your sewing machine and going in a straight line, because that's how motifs are designed to act. And there's a lot we can do with them in digitizing, but this line, if you didn't want little bits of straight line, you wanted everything curvy, you'd have to add your motif one at a time and do the line yourself to get that curve in. So when I say you can't control the line, you can control the distance, the gap a little bit, and you'll end up with it somewhere else. It won't adjust the size of the motifs. The motifs are whatever size you chose, okay? And now we're going to delete this one, delete object, and show you from start to finish. Here we go. Go back to running stitch just so we're safe because that's how I tend to work here and two and a half is fine for stitches. What I wanted to show you is here I go edit in digitizing, edit and insert. And again, if you have a PC, you have these commands. They're just in a slightly different place. And you insert a single motif. And for this one, we're doing geometric seven. It is just wonderful for quilting. And you'll see it comes in set at what it would do on your sewing machine. So I hit Control A is the easiest way to do it. I don't like to see it. And I do Option Shift to keep. Sometimes I want to change it around, but first I want to see how it looks blown up. And that actually, as a quilting design, it's marvelous. And it's easy, also has quite a good curve. Sometimes the motifs, because they're meant to be little straight stitches, might come out with a few little bumps, but this one just looks marvelous. I really like how this works, and there are quite a few others you will find. Maybe you want an angular one. All righty, this is an example of a motif stitch, and this is Universal Geometric 7, and I brought it in, and I made it bigger, and I made copies and also before I made the copies I let's see let I'll sh I took the little bitty ends off but this particular one I want to show you that you'll see here in the film strip there is no line no line no line and I've got a line and that's because I hadn't matched the last one up yet and I wanted to show you how I match up motifs when you're doing lines, it's different than when you're doing um, some of the different shapes we can insert. So I kind of bring it off, and you'll notice I zoomed in. I'm one of those people I tend to just use the doom s zoom slider. And I know I'm going outside of my hoop, so don't worry about that. But you'll see, once you zoom in, I can see, I know this is the end even though it's not marked and I can just bring it up and slide it over, slide it over, slide it over. And there you go, and you'll see over here that line went away, so I know at this point I have matched them up. Although it does look like it's just, the program's gonna let it match it up, but it looks like I wanna nudge one up because there was a little, that's better. Okay, and now we can go 
zoom out now I've made it a little bigger I can hit control a because I'm just playing with this as swirls and bring it back into the hoop and there with one motif I basically have an end-to-end -end little stitching design that's actually you know I can set it for a quilt and do it up at a three millimeter stitch and this would be lovely uh, quite simple as a, a quilt you could choose to either overlap these edges a little bit or have a little space if you do rows and the other thing I will show you while I have this screen open is you can do file new and say this is the 360 hoop so I can go to hoop and I can say I want to see what four looks like so I can enter hoop size and I can go 720 by 400 And now I've got four of them, and over here I do Command A or Control A on a PC, Command Copy. Oops, I have a few windows open there, sorry. Whoop. Here we go. I can do Paste, because I'm going digitizing to digitizing. Within any module to any module, you can cut and paste. Now I'm not going to line these up perfectly on the edges but you'll see I want the end point so I can see how the overlap looks there, there. I'll put the end point in the middle. I want the line halfway through that, there we go. And again, showing the end point, but we want to see the start point. We will match that up. And this isn't to match it perfectly. I'm not making this as a design. This is just to get a visual image of, oops, sorry, what, would this look like and you'll see since my cursor came off I came over to the film strip and tapped on the group there so I could get all of them this will give me an idea of what it's going to look like in a quilt so then I could say hmm do I want them separate or Maybe I want to do hit command, control on a PC. Oh, I didn't want that one. I want the bottom two. Yeah, sometimes it's easier to use the selection tool. And do I want to overlap them this way and this is how you can decide you can say do I like it as rows do I want it to overlap how do I want it to look and you can play by making a hoop size that doesn't exist and see what four of your items together look like and I actually like this one and would save it because I do like it overlapped um, like that and in design positioning I'd, I'd have to figure out how to make all those things happen now the motifs this is a motif and I simply did you know edit here we go insert insert single motif and I chose the motif and this guy is a Husqvarna Viking one under children. Whoops, now I've got another one. And that's how big it came in. And what I did is I hit option and shift so it would stay in proportion. 
and I made, made it bigger. Now what I wanted to test out, which I knew, but I wanted to test it out um, to be sure, that is that when you do a running stitch, even though, you know, when you're stitching it on the machine, you saw how small this came in. It came in a little thing because it has to fit within your sewing foot. But when I bring it into digitizing, this makes it not stitches yet. So I can say that my running stitch, I can go to properties and check that my running stitch is two millimeter. I could even make it bigger or smaller if I want, but for right now, I'll keep it with the two. And then, you know, I can be sure of it by opening it. I am in Stitch Editor, but you could check it out and modify. And when I look at 2D view, this shows me, I'll show you there, it says, it says stitch points. See, 2D view with stitch points. Th this is all two millimeter stitches. It didn't take a little itty bitty machine design and blow up the stitches to be one big giant stitch. So you can insert motifs to use. And the neat thing is it will show you, here's the start point and a motif is already set up to start on one side and end at the other. So if I wanted, you know, I could put a bunch of girl, I could have these touch, in which case it'd be kind of a line and it might be easier to do just as a motif line. Um, but if I wanted to do swirls, I could bring in a few of them and I can say, okay, the start point here is there and I would need to, oops, take these things off. Whoop, up, up, up. Talking too fast here. I would need to do a running line to join each one say if I wanted it to start there and I'm starting here uh, I'll sh and come down to where that is and I would need to finish this one because what you want to do is move it up here and you can see how there's not a line in between this piece and this piece in the film strip that means I did a good job connecting that to that and then you see this they're not connected. But now if I look for her endpoint, so I want to see where it is. I can tap on her and her endpoint is right there. And I bring it up to the start point. Gotten rid of those so you can see that this would stitch to this, stitch to that, stitch to that. I still have to do this one. Sorry about that. I had missed it. I had to do reverse line. And when I get over here, I would have to have her come up and end from here over to here so that it's at the same point. But you can put together, although this is a straight line, you can. do all kinds of swirlies. As you've seen the people who sell the designs do in between your designs and you can actually, depending on how you like to design, you can put motifs down, take a picture of it, which the easiest way is just go over to preview share, share picture, and you can draw with a pencil between and see what you want to do or a Sharpie and load that in as a background to, to then do your swirlies between your lines. And you can do that. So I did want to show you that you can use motifs and those of you familiar with the motifs, there are over a lot of motifs to choose from. So I should show you why. Let's do a new one. 
doing a motif line doesn't always work. And I'm going to show you that just so you can see what could happen. Of course, watch, I'll pick one. Oops. Now I want to do motif line. I want to turn off fill, pick an option, line, my line. Okay, I had tried this one. So this is a motif that I, in Draw and Paint, made larger. But it is an existing motif. And if I do a line that curves on itself, let's see. What will happen if we do this? You can see this doesn't look that great. Now what happens is depending on your motif, you don't set the join. You can specify it if you knew how exactly how long your line is and you can play with it a bit. So you can see depending on what line you have, you can choose to do a motif line. But if you wanted it to kind of twirl in on itself or something or really be close together, it's, it's going to end up all messed. So it all, a lot depends on what you want to do. Okay, now maybe you're sitting there going, oh, but Maggie, I really want to use that particular motif, and I was hoping to get it to be some kind of a line to be simple. So I've got motif line set. We go over to options, fill area and line, and I've chosen that little heart motif. I left the minimum gap at zero. I've tried putting it up at two or three, which is interesting because this, it makes a straight line after the arrow. So it doesn't look too weird, even though it's curved over here, because the arrow would shoot. So you can play with gap whenever you add a motif line, but for now we'll do zero. And you click create area or line. And my thought was, yeah, how many of these do I need to work it in? Like if I want three and I'm going to curve my line a little bit, at what point, you know, if you've got hearts, oop, see, and that comes off. So if I wanted to work this in, I know by just kind of nudging my line, I've got a little curve here that I can then work this into a design with maybe a big heart here and some other hearts and I know what three look like and I can also you know if I want it angled more I can do that and then make it a little tighter until the middle one disappears again then I'll know there there we go so that's as tight as we can get it And you can play with your angles. I always come off. And see, maybe you want to add this kind of a swirly effect in with the hearts. And maybe I'll play with that some more. Now, shapes give you all kinds of stuff. And I had a lot of fun with these. This is one where these shapes are all right here in your system. And you can imagine with some pretty swirly lines. Now this is, I had put the alignment stitches in. Oh, and I wanted to show you that. I wanted to show you the Y. Did I bring that open? Let me see, nope. Didn't want to show you that one yet. I'm like, ah, here we go. Okay, so this is not a hoop we have. This is your 260 hoop that I just showed you. And what I wanted to clarify is when we do alignment stitches you can start at the edge here and kind of do your circle to here to here to here and do your little swirly lines to here to here to here and back and say with this being the hoop you don't want to come right to this edge if you use alignment stitches if you're not using design positioning on the machine to match the very last stitch with the very first one. Although these alignment stitches are a 
look like they're off because I left it out of the hoop to show you that what you do is you have your alignment stitches stitch first and if they're the first two stitches you can tell when you've hooped that this stitch is right on top of that one and that one's right on top of this. But what would happen if you had a stitch on here from the very edge of the hoop, like over here, which you can do, but you also had one on this end, then you would have an overlap where you'd have this come back and then over here, we go back and forth. So when I'm working it, when we're doing alignment stitches, you'll notice that I'll kind of start right at the edge here, but on the second one, because we would be putting the X's on, the crosses on top of each other, I won't go all the way to the edge. I come in one grid from the edge. So that's what I wanted to talk about is that we do have the ability to put the alignment stitches in the corners and you kind of fix, stitch the first two and then if you can get the first two to stitch right on top of the ones of the previous stitch out, you know you're in the right place. And as far as how you do it, people have all different favorite ways of design positioning. I don't want to get into that too much. I tend to fold my fabric in half and make a line and fold it in half that way and know that I have my center point where my four seams line and put the center point in. And that tends to work. Some people print designs and do all kinds of more stuff. And a lot of the new machines help make that much easier for you. So this is just that when you do the alignment stitches and then the first things that stitch, you put them right at the top, you can tell if you're gonna be in the right place or not because if your stitches were over, then you move too far over and if they were too far apart, you can tell. So that's how they help you. And then you just take them out with a seam ripper. They're not knotted um, and embedded into the fabric. They are meant to be alignment stitches that you can pull out. So this was again showing you the shapes and when you go into quick create mode, you have all kinds of shapes you can pull. And there are all these different stars and different moons and you can pull them in and put them in. And the neat thing about the shapes that I have found is they all start and end at the same place. So pretty much you would come in and have a line has to touch that top and then you would stitch this. You always have your joining lines in between each, between each and then you need something around to come over to this one which it's on the side and again, you can draw it around or you can just, as we're sitting here, do it. Okay, so this, I have a design that I did in a much earlier video and I can have you all go to that video. And it is this clover, we did it as an applique and it's from Heart Shapes. And we also moved it into Cross Stitcher to do it as a cross stitch design. And I happen to really like symmetrical shamrocks out of Heart Shapes. And what I did, whoops, we showed you the stars. And I, can, I know I'm, I'm going back and forth here. Sorry about this, folks. I had so many I wanted to share with you. I've got them all piled up on my desktop. Sorry, I used the assistant. I used Express Design, Design into Hoop. The Quick Create, I didn't like. I used Express Design, Design into Hoop. And I used the Express Border. And I made it a running stitch. And I brought in one of these. And then I changed the size. And I kind of... Let's see, use my box select and the rotate thing and turn them back and forth. And I have this. And to me, when I'm planning an end-to-end -end design, 
I like to get the shapes in first and then I can figure out how much swirl I want and how much effort I want to put into the swirls and the lines to connect them. Now, this one again, the start and end is at the same place. So I just have to make sure that when I make my line from here, it touches this at some point. Or actually, maybe I'd be do this one first and then come up and do that one and do that one and that one and that one. So I pick the shapes and I put all the shapes in and then I make the connecting lines, but you're not just making one line. You're making a line from here to here and then here to here, which it can be swirly, however you want to do it. And if you prefer, you know, within shapes, you can do something very angular and you can have all straight lines joining it and all angular pictures that you've brought in. So this is some of the, the choices. This one, again, is not a company shape. It's something that I put together from a bunch of shapes, made a picture, and then um, did it. This is Trace, and the neat thing about this is if I put in three circle shapes, it would go here and stop, and here and stop, and I'd have to put a line between them. But you'll see in this group, the whole thing stitches out without any breaks because it's kind of gone back and forth. It did this, that, then it goes down and around. And if you have something that is an outline and you bring it in, you can work it in drawer and paint you can bring it in such that the whole thing will stitch all at once and then you need to put your tails on it to have a connect here to here. Say if I wanted to do a few more circles and line them up but just have a little bit of something on either end. So there are lots of different ways to approach this and then of course those of you who are artists can just sit down with a marker and kind of go I want a swirl and maybe I want hearts Maybe I want to write the word love, and maybe I want this and that, the next thing, and over. Because it's all going to be just placing points so that your line comes and ends over here. And I think that's all I was going to share with you. If you created something in Draw and Paint, and this is just... A quick example where I used the add here little insert tab and I use shapes and this works the same as it does in your digitizing modules. Now from here you can save your file and once you've saved your file and you do have to save it you can actually close it Open digitizing, you have to click it to open, so you're in digitizing, see I have my little digitizing symbol, and I can click load background, and this one is test, and you'll see that even though I didn't export this as a picture, I can load directly from the draw page into digitizing. Now again, this is a background, it is not stitches yet. So to create stitches, I go to Quick Create Trace. There is no single trace choice. Although if you wanted, you could make it a motif line and then go over to your film strip and properties and change it to a running. If I do double and I click on this, and I just click OK to see if the color tolerance is OK. You'll see I have the whole thing with some running and some double stitch. And if I click background off, you can see my lines, that it did come through all the way in all these pieces. Now, the other thing is if I look at how it's stitching out, you'll see that a good number of these pieces became 
running stitch, not just the little knot bits when you just have two stitches, it's just a start or a knot, but all these other parts. With these, you'd want to be very careful to go back in and edit them out to see if you still have a solid line because you don't want knots on the back. So this is something where we would then go copy embroidery, which is, oh, I have to click all. Sorry about that. Copy embroidery here. Open into Stitch Editor over here. Paste. And I was going to set it to stitches. It's the wrong hoop size, but you'll see when I paste, I'm not getting a lot of trims, which is a very good thing. I do, as I said, I do did see some of the back and forth for knots, but I don't have trims. And you don't want trims in your end-to-end -end stitching. It makes a mess on the back and that's not okay for end-to-end -end quilting. Okay, so I told you that you could do in digitizing, insert, insert lettering, and you can do these double stitch outline or running stitch outline, whichever you decide to set them up as. These are double stitch and you'll notice I've been bringing them together and one of the things that I wanted to show you, and I am using Bezier on these to just get the little squiggly lines. My next one I will be connecting is the V. Now, when I click on it, it will light up at the start and end point and you see how my cursor has that little minus sign. Now, if I click there, ooh, click right on the V, you'll see it changes to an X. And that tells me that I am connected and I'm not going to have the thread stop, that I'm going to have continuous stitching from where this V ends as soon as it gave me that X. And then I can do little points. and come here, you see it's an X again, and I can say finish the line, and you'll notice it makes these uh, pinwheels, and I can move it to make sure, see how it sits right perfectly in there, and that means that this line is connected there. Now I will not get that connecting different shapes. This is when I am using lines. It can be straight lines. It doesn't have to be Bezier, but when I'm using lines to connect things. So a lot of the thing, the items I've been inserting and showing you this wouldn't work with, but it does work when you go to join them. And now the last one we need to bring is this guy and he's down there. So again, I'm leaving it with Bezier. I've got the minus sign. Click on it, changes to an X. And then because these all joined on the bottom, I was thinking that to make it easy, of course, I ended up moving them off. I'm gonna have to match that up one, two in a little bit. Because most of these were joined on the bottom, I thought doing a little squiggles around here will be fine because if you are actually doing these over and over and over, the squiggles from the one above this would be here and then they'd be writing. And, oh, I forgot to do these while I did them. Ha! I don't have as many handles because I didn't set them up while I did them. So I have to undo that and show you again so you, you see the right way to do it. up to there. Here we go. It says Bezier. I click on there. Whoop. Just put some lines in because I just 
swirling around and it goes up to two. One, two, it came up over there, so I'll have to match that up. And now, I want to see And the reason that's not giving me the little thing is because it doesn't have the double stitch bottom above it. So I move the double stitch bottom above it because I've got that like this. And right now these two aren't showing connected. And this one No, I'm just fussing back and forth, aren't I? Yeah, I'm in point select. There we go, it's showing the X instead of the minus sign. So those are fine, and now this one Ah, uh, I needed to come from the top of there down to here. I actually just want a little curvy one. One. There we go. So that's kind of a messy mess because I've been doing these in like five minutes to just <laughs> be able to get this video going. I think I would definitely change this this little loop-de-doo I don't care for at all. Bring this down, bring this up, if not even take that piece off and let it be high. Just have a little, a little loop de doo up there, and then maybe make this one have a couple extra points. I always forget to finish and insert points before I start moving things around. Finish delete points. And you see, you can continue to play with it and figure it out. But the neat thing about this is I had set these little running lines at single stitch, and these are double stitch. So this will show up just a little bit more. And I looked at, which I could do, taking the E, one of the options for this piece, to make it simpler, was to take this out and these two. I can show you that really quick, hopefully, because this is getting too long for a video. But I could delete that, boing, and then we could delete the one going from here down. And what you would do is come over to the E and add stitches so that Let's do a finish insert point. And this one could come out this way. And this one could come out this way. Ah. Now I can add a few more. And I can make it match pretty close to the letter, it doesn't have to be perfect because I'm, it just has to be as good as I want it to be. And then I could take this piece off 
Do, do, do. And now this is one, and I have a little bit cleaner line down here. Oops, we have to go from the bottom of the V to the bottom of the E, which is very simple. Let's do one from here. Let's click right on it. Uh, there we go. Change to the X. Change to the X, click on it. Present Bezier. And I forgot to put the handles in as I went, which it doesn't like to let you do afterwards. But anyhow, that is giving you a good idea. Oh, I should, I should do this the correct way. I'll have to stop, take a breath, and edit some of this stuff out. So okay, so here's the V. I've got Bezier selected, then it turns to a minus sign. You get it right to the center where when you click, it's going to be in the center. Changes to an X. Give it a little swirl, a little swirl. Changes to an X. Finish drawing. And then... You have one with lettering. Okie doke. So there are a few things that I wanted to be sure that I made clear before I move on. And that's, I've, I've pointed out a few cases, I believe, the trims, that when you see a trim in a design, that means you're going to have a knot on the back if your machine does the trimming and knotting for you, or you're going to have a jump stitch. And that is a T in a little green circle. And you see those in Stitch Editor. The other thing is when you're drawing a line or an object, your start point is in green and your end point is in red. Now, I wanted to kind of go back, since we've done all these different shapes, to the original concept of here is an end-to-end -end design and you've got lines and on the left side in the film strip you don't have lines between your objects and I know I keep saying that but that's sort of the most important part of this so I, I've been repeating myself on that point and hopefully you can see that this can be very easy I've been showing you some quickly done like ugly swirls but if you Take a moment and take a deep breath. You can probably make some pretty little swirls to join whatever shapes you like. And if you're an artist, my gosh, this would be so simple for you. The things that I didn't show you, as you're pathing, you kind of over here on the left, and I haven't moved the little running stitches up between the places either yet on this, I did want to show you that you do have reverse line. You'll see I'm an object of digitizing and I can click reversal and that will put the start point where the end point and the end point where the stop point is and flip the line. Now the problem is that with motifs notice it made it a mess <laughs> because it flipped everything about the line. So when you're using motifs you can't Depending on the motif and your design, reverse line might not get what you're hoping for. In this particular case, if I wanted a circle of people, uh, like we just had, I want to go to previous, this, I would do the bottom three as individual inserts and do a line to join them. And then you see you can come off and you can come off and you have a little circle of people to do. So there is a way around it, but it is something that you will end up using reverse line as you're pathing to make your start and end points match up. And you need to be aware that when you're in motifs, you might get some funny results and have to do something else. 
Now we've covered most of these. I haven't yet covered the super designs and um, I'm going to bounce through those quickly and the completely by hand, of course, that would be you can draw and you can bring it in as a load background and then just trace over your shape as I've been showing you how to trace throughout. The thing to know here on super designs is if I hit edit, insert, Ah, I'm sorry, I'm the wrong one. I've got both of these open so that I could bounce between them for you. Edit, you have to be in digitize, whoop, 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 over here. You have to be in digitizing. That's where I start and work all of my pieces. Edit, insert, super design. And I wanted to show you the bunny. Where's the bunny? There we go. Okay, so if I do the bunny, and he's plenty big. Oop, oop, somehow I mustn't have. I thought I didn't click on him good enough. Oops. Bunny, click, there we go. It says style light, which means I've got the line. Let's do him at 100. So you can see him. Now, What you see is a couple of things. You see all of the different lines here in between the steps, but the other thing you can do is hit Command A, and in Edit, don't do Copy, but do Copy Embroidery, because we need to look at this in Stitch Editor. And you'll see the green S and the red end for this little piece, not for the whole thing. And now that we're in Stitch Editor, over here I just change, and you'll see I've got my Stitch Editor symbol. Again, you'd be in Modify in an earlier version. And I hit Paste. It says I'm going to make it into stitches. And the thing was, when it was in digitizing, it wasn't yet stitches. So I could resize it, I could do whatever, and the program would adjust for me. And now in Stitch Editor, I turned the view, I turned my grid off so that I could see all my little trims. And you see how many trims this piece has. So although it might make a nice looking red work style design for the concept of end-to-end -end quilting where you don't want knots on the back, this would not work. If you really wanted something similar to this bunny, you would bring it into digitizing. Let's see if he's still over there. I'm just going to delete that part, go to digitizing. And you could use it as an image. Let's say start in a new color. And just start tracing it yourself and not have uh, perhaps as many images, uh, I mean as many details. You wouldn't be able to have the face, but you would just go around and trace your, per your image, which you would do also if you're doing your own artwork, by placing points or again, you have the option if you like using a, a pencil on a tablet of using the freehand create. And I am in the point create and I tend to use point create a lot. So that is how you would do it and it's also how you would check for the trims. And I'm gonna take this one out. I can click on group and get rid of that. Click on group and get rid of that. <laughs> okay, let's go back here. I don't think I need that. So the running, the super designs running stitch, many do have too many trims, but quite a few work quite well. So let's go back over here. Super designs running stitch. This, I don't, this is the super design heart and you can see a shape heart is gonna work out better. See how you've got the little bit here or whatever. But these were just lovely. These are one of the shapes in either Encore or Borders. 
that looked like a satin, and then I changed it to line. So let's see if I can find those. I should have it handy. Headed, insert, super design. Doo -doo -doo. It was either in Encore. No, that one was in Encore. So this one. I think it was flowers and leaves. I've done some of the, okay, I've done some of these in flowers and leaves. Where were those borders? There they are. So you see how it says satin and I change it to line. And I apply, and I hit ungroup, and that's actually too many colors here, but let's get this one darker so you can see it. And this, I didn't hit, I didn't hit options, so I got it kind of off. But you can see I have these swirly lines now, and they have beautiful curves. And now that I have ungrouped, you'll see there's um, this one and this one. The first two are one piece. So I would group that again, move it down, and I have ready-made swirls that I can use to add into my pieces, and I would have to... I can change it to running stitch, but I think I've mentioned when you change it to running stitch, the program will not change the view of where the start and end points are. So you have to watch it in preview to see it stitch out. And this is another thing that you can play with for shapes. So we're gonna get rid of that guy and go back over here and see that there are different things you can do in super designs and I did use some of those shapes, this one here, to get really nice curvy lines when I was putting this heart thing together. Here's another example of something you can do. You can see here I'm in the embroidery module. Sometimes I like looking at super designs in the embroidery module, and if I like this, I would actually start over in digitizing. I wouldn't try and move it from embroidery to digitizing. I just like the concept of having the super design load into digitizing in a way that I can manipulate it however I want. And that might be an unnecessary step, but sometimes I will view them here and also view the, uh, the trims to make sure I'm okay with those. Wanted to remind you that in super designs there are sports categories and you can change the color the color uh, objects, images, designs, two line there. Here's another one. Now, technically, th this, if you did only this piece in a hoop, would be the one design. And then what I would be doing is, um, like I did with the E, bring this up to match over here, and this is not coming out the other end, it's starting and ending here, but you would be matching up your hoop and have pieces that go one after the other. So again, it depends on how you want to define end to end. It would fit with the quilter's definition, but um, like I said, there might be some companies that like to say, oh no, it has to be running line in only one direction, and that's up to you. This is another super design, and if you watch it play through Design Player, you can see that it is running stitches and double stitches, and it would make a great addition. And here's a little bit more playing. These are from Super Design. They're the specialty needles. This one, if I were going to do this to use a shape to add, I would do this to here, change it to a double stitch 
do that and come back and then of course copy and paste the other pieces and because it's a double stitch it would end on this part right here which is also where it would start and you could do lines coming out there to add it this I was I didn't really love it so I was playing with the bezier line because you can make your own I I actually prefer this kind of Celtic little shape in a little bit flatter of a circle, but I wanted to show you that you can get a shape and then sort of make your own off it. And this was just another that you can do the simple hearts and start playing. Again, you can see I'm in embroidery here was I, where I was just testing something out. And if I liked the arrangement, I would probably just go recreate it in digitizing because the co copy and paste takes only a few minutes completely by hand for those of you artists. Okay, I'm not, obviously. <laughs> if I had drawn this on a piece of paper, it would be the same as if I also, if you're a graphic artist, came in here to draw and paint, start on the left, you know, do your little symbol. Whoop, whoop. I have to be careful because I am in order to be able to jump between programs, I'm in reader view here, and if I'm not careful, it wants to page forward on me. But you'll see, and you can come down and then end over here. And this you could either try trace, or you could bring it in as a background and just trace over it yourself, which if I were doing it, I would do because I can fix how I don't like some of the curves came out and I can play with them more. Now, for those of you who want some design, uh, some more ideas, because I've been babbling very quickly and going la 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 la, and you might be like, ooh, I want to see more. If you watch free motion quilting, a lot of them will show you how to make a design by going and kind of going over it. Maybe you'd like the design, this heart to have a few more little things in it going back and forth and you can get some ideas of how to path a design in some ways of putting your pencil down and going all the way across until it gets over to the other point and you can get more of those ideas by watching some free motion videos and i did want to show you that with bezier line i mean technically this is an end-to-end -end, but i know we like them a little fancier it depends on a large quilt that would not, it wouldn't be difficult and wouldn't take off from your fabrics if that was the highlight you were trying to do. When I'm playing with a bezier and, and getting shapes, I change my grid size. You know, it's under view on the PC and your grid size on a Mac is under your preferences which is in the top left, you just click on your digitizing symbol. In the upper, uh, you would click on it there, my Sonet digitizing way at the top and you'll see preferences and you can change your grid. And I've changed it to two inches, you know, 50 mil millimeters and really played with mapping it out evenly. And you can see on these, I did the handles evenly to the one grid and I've spaced these evenly and you know I can get uneven ones I can make this longer I can push it all together and make it just up and down and up and down shorter and again I can change my grids and get all kinds of even bezier uh, designs and if you want to learn bezier that's a fun way to do it because your end result is kind of pleasing when you match it to a grid and you match all, all of the, the uh, handles. There's something visually pleasing about designs that are symmetrical. There, it doesn't always have to be. I mean, there are beautiful things that aren't symmetrical, but when you're learning, this is an easy way to learn Bézier. So for our February challenge, we have a Facebook group we want to see any quilting design you've done in the software. Now, I'm not saying end-to-end -end because quite simply end-to-end, -end, you match the little ends of the designs up 
because you are doing a very long piece and some of you might want to do just a mug rug so you don't need little blurpers on the end I'll call it let me get back here and uh, not that one where are we this one yeah, let's get into you don't if you're doing a mug rug whoop, whoop. see I'm I'm just bunching running ahead I have to be careful there if you're doing a mug rug you could actually make this a little swirl on the end and make that a little swirl and not have points that you're matching up because you're just doing the one design in the hoop same thing with placemats if it's not one big design you might be doing it horizontally across the shorter length and maybe you don't need i'm calling these little plurpers on either end of your design maybe you just want a quilting design that sits in the hoop the end to end has the matching points but for the challenge so now i have to get myself down to the challenge page but you've seen those any quilting design and again this is just so whatever you want to do let's see it now i know we have a uh, quilt block wizard and we'll let if you've done something in quilt block wizard you want to share actually in the facebook group technically we say please share all the time we love to see what you're working on but for the challenge it will be any quilting design you've done it can be end to end or it can be based on this video in end to end pieces and show us what you're doing and come join us in facebook i this this video is longer than i usually do but there was so much to cover and any question you have at all about this video would be happy to answer if you saw a piece and you're like i didn't really understand how you did that i can explain it i can add a short two or three minute little video and walk you through the steps we're very helpful over on Facebook and we have a good time. So go ahead and join us there. And we're clicking off. Talk to you later. Bye.